Welcome to Charmed Life, a radio show discussing spirituality, magic, and the unconditional love of the universe. Thanks for tuning in. Hi, welcome to another episode of Charmed Life. I'm Trisha Carr. I am so honored to be here with you today. So if it is your first time joining me, well, your timing is perfect, and you may be watching live, and um, if you... If you aren't watching it live, let me tell you that this is a live broadcast every Sunday at 11 a.m. Pacific on UBN Radio or UBNRadio.com, Channel 1. You can also watch it live by liking my Facebook page. You'll you'll be able to catch it um, as Facebook Live broadcast, essentially. So that is Facebook.com slash Trisha Carr Charm. So um, and if you would like to, if you're listening live and want to catch up with the archives for the show, please do search for it on iTunes, Stitcher or Spreaker. And um, please do subscribe. I would like to send this message out. This, this. I would like to implore you that if you like this material, please do subscribe. I believe there are ways to leave um, reviews as well. I would love it if you would do that. Um, any, any review at all. I would like to, you, for you to keep it positive, though, right? Because that's what this show is truly about, in, in, in my design at least. And, of course, you can also find archives of the show on Facebook. Excuse me. I said that already. Um, you can find archives on YouTube. And you can find the YouTube archives by searching Charmed Life with Trisha Carr. And I have a couple of channels, actually, that I'm publishing these on. One of the channels I'm publishing these on is YouTube.com slash Kittyos, K-I-T-T-Y-O-H-S. And that is where I also house my uh, videos for that my cats produce. I'll just be honest, they produce them. I have a kitty cat named Franzi, and he decided that he really wanted to be able to love more people and just lo- connect with more beings. And so he went and got himself um, a viral video. <laughs> So he has like 11 million views on this channel. <laughs> and so I'm putting some of my content out on there as well. Because, of course, if you do already know me, you know that I, I have a big heart and a big part of the work that I do is for animals and nature. And um, to that point, I'll give you a little background on myself. And again, in case it's your first time joining me. Um, I am Trisha, and I am a medium. I'm an animal communicator, and I also am an energy healer. So I'll just explain a little bit what that is. So yes, mediumship is something that is under the, the big category of intuitive or psychic gifts or abilities. Gifts is kind of a weighted word. Uh, sure, everything is a gift of the universe, of of God energy, of the universal energies. But uh, we are also the creators of of all of that that we are. So let's say that there are abilities. And by the way, I believe we all have these abilities. I also believe that they fall into or at least are of the exact same function of artistic and creative abilities. I I discovered that along my path when I was in my sort of awakening, uh, grand awakening to these different abilities. And um, I discovered that, you know, Growing up being an artist my whole life, as starting as a kid, you know, and who knows even before that, when I would sing or when I would act, acting was a big part of my of my um, studies. Even as a little kid, I started acting at age eleven, and before I would go on stage, I would take a moment and I would go and I would visualize and I would bring in the feelings of the character. I would connect with it. And then I will walk out on stage. And guess what? That's exactly what I do now when I am tapping into the universal energies using my clairvoyance, clairsentience, which is the uh, spiritual kind of feeling, clairaudience, which is the spiritual kind of hearing, claircognizance, which is the spiritual knowing. I'm saying all of these because I have this real strong feeling right now that there are people who are listening in all time and space who are hearing that, those words and saying, oh my goodness, I hear someone in particular, I'm feeling someone in particular saying, Claire cognizance. So when I just all of a sudden know something that I didn't know previously, and it comes out of seemingly nowhere, oh, that's a spiritual ability? That's a psychic gift? That's an intuitive gift? It is. And we all have these, and we all use them, whether consciously or unconsciously. So just want to preface that, that that's a part of the work that I'm interested in pursuing, helping people to see 
that this planet and this existence is truly magical, which is why I call the show Charmed Life. Charm being something that is uh, creates a feeling of magic. It actually brings you into, when you're charmed, you're brought into, it's the motion of going into magic. And magic to me is that creative ability that we have where we take something that is a thought and then at some point it becomes something physical that's magical people I mean if you're a parent then you know magic (laughs) because you you channeled a being that didn't exist yet in the physical form through your body into this physical plane and it's the same everything that is in your life you have channeled and you have exercised these these abilities of desire and then you couple that with the expectation of it. Faith, you know, you couple it with faith. But faith, I think we need to recapitulate. We need to redeem the word faith because it's gotten all mingled and muddied up with religion and with other people's definition of it. People actually using the word faith to mean something that it doesn't mean. What faith really is, is allowance of the universe or of God energy to connect with you and to work with you to bring your desires into the physical plane. That's what faith is or expectation or allowance. And I am taking calls, by the way, today. I'll take a moment to say that. Please do call if you would like to ask a question and or if you would like to connect with the with the non-physical or with someone who has passed or if you have a question about life. I really love and welcome also just spiritual questions, just questions in general about how the universe works and um, how you can connect with the, the reality of your magical life or your charmed life. And it is a reality. We're, we're constantly just switching into alternate realities or prospective realities. Every single second, we are channeling billions of different realities because they all exist. Because in the quantum field, because above time and space, time and space does not exist. So without time and space, all of the realities exist. And all we're doing is aligning ourselves with them. I hope that is somehow a comfort to some some people that are listening. And if it isn't a comfort yet, just go ahead and let it sink into your imagination and just think of it like it's a game or a fun book that you're reading. And it'll take roots the way it can or it wants to. And, and perhaps down the road, it will it will come into fruition, into fruition as something that you can really use and something that is very inspiring and something that is some it creates momentum for you and creates the the fuel that helps you to manifest as we say or to bring into material reality um, all of those things that you desire and so anyway 323-524-2599 I'll be taking calls but I do want to talk to you guys about some really exciting topics to me and uh, some things that have been on my heart and particularly this last week so the title of this episode is Gratitude in Times of Challenge, because that's the hardest time to do that, isn't it? To be grateful when you're experiencing challenge. And challenge is a, I'm soft pedaling it because I didn't want the vibe to be too low on the title, but I'm talking about suffering and pain as well. But you know, when we are just having a challenging day or a bad day, quote unquote, there's some, there's some suffering in there. There's pain of some kind, and that's a spectrum. Oh my goodness, don't you hate when you go to the doctor? I don't know if you hate this. I do. And they say, what is your pain level on a scale of 1 to 10? I'm like, what does that mean? Who's 1 to 10? I mean, to me, 10 is burning to death, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> but what, do you, what is it for you? Like, can you imagine anything worse? And I actually, I've never experienced the most pain I can experience. So how am I supposed to know what 10 is? And then if you go too low, then they're like, oh, you don't even get out of here. You don't even need any help. <laughs> I'm like, no. So I hate that pain scale. But but it's useful for talking about emotional um, pain. You know, you're having a bad day. Well, dang it, my hair won't do what I want it to do with a bad hair day. There's a note. There's a little grain of suffering in there. Because just when you have a good hair day, you wake up and you're like, damn, my hair looks good. And it just wants to look good without me trying too hard. That's beautiful, right? That's just flow. It can really, little things like that can get you into the flow. So when you experience things like that, please do go with it. Embrace it and say, yes, that's the energy I am I am aligned with right now. This is actually a really good um, segue into... The, the end of my of my um, message today. So well, I'll put a pin in it and get to the, the head of it. So I want to talk about gratitude. 
what's gratitude? I was just talking a moment ago about faith, allowance, expectation. And actually, I was in, in the car on the way here, and I was listening to um, a Hay House podcast with a person named Brandon Bouchard. Uh, he has a book that he was speaking on in this podcast, and he said that the two keys to manifesting or um, materializing, getting the things in your life that you want, he said the two keys are... Um, Oh, I've just forgotten one of them. One of them is expectation. That's a segment. Oh, desire. I can't remember how he said it, but desire and expectation. So desire. I want to start with desire because we're conditioned to think that our desires are foolish or our desires are, we're conditioned to go against them. We're conditioned to, to when we're growing up and we're going to school, you know, Good girls go to school even though even though they don't feel well, you know. And I'm not bashing on any parents out there. <laughs> sometimes I don't know. Sometimes you maybe you just have to say that because you got to get them in the car. But I'm just saying that a child would be fearing something, suffering, and they don't know how to articulate it. There's something at school, and it's growing pains a lot of the time. Um, but if it's it, if we aren't able to address it, and then we're ju- you're just bl- put this blanket on it of you know, good kids do this. So deny your desires, deny what's in your heart. The desire of the child who is afraid to go to school that day is understanding whatever the thing is that's that's creating the fear, actually trying to align with it in some way. That's the real desire of the kid's heart. But if, you know, we don't have time to, or we don't have the understanding, whatever it is, we, we just tell, we just tell the kid to deny their desire. And it's not just parents that do that. It's the it's all of the world. It's everything around us. This is the landscape in which we live. So, what we want to do when we do become uh, autonomous, when we become um, the person who governs themselves, meaning you know we're, we're an adult, the the first thing we need to do in order to be able to start to align with our desires and the things we want in our life, uh, we need to develop our self-love we need to de- we need to develop our worthiness and part of the understanding that we're worthy is understanding that our desires are actually divine the things that we want in life the things that we're ur- we, we have yearnings for are divine and of course I can I can feel some of y'all saying like well but what if I want to cheat on my spouse well you got to back it up a little bit I mean you're <laughs> you're going all the way to to the the superficial part of this desire that the core of that desire say I want to cheat on my spouse obviously that's going to create a lot of pain the core of that desire or that urge is I want to connect. That's the core of it. That's the nugget. So you got to start there. You got to kind of back it up and get deep into the the divine part of all of your desires. But just think about it. You know, I want a career that's fulfilling. I want a career that brings me a lot of money. I want a career. Those are beautiful, right? That's divine. The universe desires for us to be abundant. The universe is endless abundance. That is our higher calling, is abundance, is, is prosperity, is receiving. And, and not only in cash, but cash is okay. Cash is great. But also in love and relationships. So um, the foundation of this work, of this talk, is to realize that, is to work on the fact that your desires are divine and that you are worthy. And that's the principle that, uh, the first principle that Brendan Bouchard was saying, desires and expectations. So I want to talk about gratitude now. Gratitude, the state of gratitude is actually an extremely powerful manifesting mode. Because what, what gratitude is, is actually um, you dialing into that frequency of ex- expectation and allowance, faith, however you want to look at it. It's you actually believing before you're seeing because if you are grateful, I'm grateful that I have this little book. So I've completely accepted the ownership or the, you know, the bounty of having this little book. So that just opens me up to get another book like it that's, you know what I mean, like something in, in, in alignment with that frequency. So let me, let me explain frequency. We talk about that a lot on this show. We are just energy. Everything is energy. That is science, people. That isn't just, you know, a woo-woo lady on the internet telling you that. That's true. Everything is energy. And energy, we, we have a great model of, of energy and of frequency, of personal frequency, of changing our energetic signature and how we are um, vibrating and emitting a signal out into the universe. We have a great uh, model of that with um, the radio. And actually, you know, with the internet, you know, when, when things aren't going right and you're getting a, a messy signal, um, that's because I think it's because of the satellite 
it's all waves and stuff too, right? I'm not a scientist. Shocking. But I do love, I do take inspiration from science. So our frequency, our personal frequency is how, as I was saying earlier, we're always channeling or aligning with per- perspective realities. It's because of that frequency. It's because of the, the little knob on the radio that we're turning to 106.7, which is where K-Rock is in Los Angeles. Or if, but if we get to 106.8, it's going to be a little fuzzy. It's not coming in real clear. And we all, we've all experienced that. We're getting some of what we want. You're like, wow, I got a new job. It's really great. Oh, good. The pay's better. Not quite as much as I was hoping. It's more creative or more structured than, than my last job, which was what I was wanting. But, you know, there's still some room. You know, when the frequency isn't all dialed in. But the thing is, when you can be in gratitude about the things that you have, then you actually tune your frequency into that allowance state so that you can get more of what you desire and again the principle there is for your desires for you to own your desires as well and to even be grateful for them and that's kind of the 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 catch here is if you can be grateful for your desires your desires are prospective realities and sometimes we feel like that state of desiring is uncomfortable because the and the reason for that is because when, we, when we're feeling uncomfortable with the fact that we have desires, it's because we're actually noticing the lack thereof. And that takes me to, um, that takes me to explaining some of the universal laws. One in particular, or just how to work with the universal laws. So I did mention that the universe is prosperity. And so there is, actually the, the universe is endless prosperity or endless abundance. That is basically a way of saying the law of prosperity or the law of abundance. That is a universal law. It's a pretty high um, frequency universal law. And so we have all kinds of laws in the universe. And there's all, when you're, when, if you're trying to align with a particular universal law, but you're not all the way there, you can actually activate something that is sort of like its opposite, the opposite pole. So let's say um, I am really hoping to get a new car you know, a new fancy car. And I'm like, I'm going to demand, you know, call it in, invoke it as we do with some of our self-help um, practices where we're um, calling into existence that car. And we have a caller, Jarvis? Yeah, okay, cool. I'll end the statement and then I'll get to you, caller. Hang on. So when we're trying to call into existence that new car, um, but we, we feel along, you're like, but how's that possible? I'm looking at my bank account. I'm looking at my job. It's not possible. I have all these things. So when you are noticing the lack thereof, you're actually, you begin to activate scarcity instead of abundance. And that's because that's just where you are. So you need to back it up a little bit, just like we were saying with the, with the desires and we need to be able to own and love our desires. It, when, you're, when you're trying to connect with the frequency of a higher universal law and you keep invoking its opposite invoking means inviting or experiencing its opposite that just means you need to you need to back up a little bit you just need to back up to a step where you are and you just need to align with something a little better and so in that case of saying you know I'm not getting this car you just probably need to get back into your belief system and find out if you actually have a belief system that says I deserve this car I deserve good things Um, We might need to dig out some things like money doesn't grow on trees. Life is hard. You have to suffer in order to earn. Those are the kinds of things you might need to clear out first. And all they need need to do, all you need to do to be able to clear those out is place your awareness on them. Give them some space to breathe. And then bring in the belief that you probably already have that you just want to outseat that lower belief. So if you find in there there's some kind of resonance with life is hard. And then you die. Oh, I've always hated that phrase. Life is hard and then you die. Come on, man. That's rude. So (laughs) if you have that in there, you want to, but you really, you're like, but over here, so I have this little belief, life is hard and then you die. And you have a little fear. Like it it pricks a little something in you. You're like, oh my gosh, but I don't want to believe that anymore. Okay, well, what, what is the thing that I do believe that is higher vibrational, you know, which is means closer to love, closer to my true being, which is made of love. And it's life is easy. Life is fun. Life wants me to be happy. Oh, yeah, I believe that. I feel that. That makes me feel good. Uh, and then it's, it grows a little bit when you put your awareness on that, and you just keep putting your awareness on that. And this is basically how affirmations work. And then soon enough, this one's going to be like, well, there's no room for me. This one's growing. Life is wonderful. Bye-bye. <laughs> so you clear out all those little desires by 
putting your awareness on the ones that you really do connect with and continue to. And the best way to do this is in different kinds of meditation practices and daily caring about how you feel and how you think. And when you notice negative thoughts and emotions, don't judge yourself. You don't have to judge yourself. You can just try to take a moment, take a breath, love yourself and say, but remember self, you believe this, which is beautiful. And so let's just try to change that dial, change that frequency for a moment to that beautiful thought. And so with that, Jarvis, who is producing the show, by the way. Hi, Jarvis. <laughs> um, we have a call, so let's take a call. I'm going to take a sip of water while we bring the caller on. Hello, you're on the air. Who's this? Hello? Yeah, hi. Who's this? Oh, hi. It's Lisa. Hi, Lisa. Where are you calling from? Uh, Pennsylvania. Nice to meet you. I'm just making a note here. Lisa from Pennsylvania, what's going on with you today? Thank you so much for calling. Actually, I had a whole other thing that oh. I wanted to ask you about. An other thing? Okay. And as I was, yep, and as I was listening to what you were saying, my brain started hooking them together, and I thought, oh, okay, the gratitude and the... For me, that desire and gratitude thing, I used to think that when I get, like Santa Claus, what it is I desire, then I will be grateful. If only oh. I have this, I will then have that. Right. I am most comfortable when I am grateful for having exactly what I desire right now in this minute. Yes. Even if potentially what I have sucks. <laughs> oh, that's great. Um, yes. Go ahead, honey. That leads into my question about, I have a question I am not feeling, notice I say the word feeling, that I am able to stay grounded and my brain is a blither and I am missing a lot of input okay. <laughs> that I'm not getting. And you were talking about the radio frequency sounds kind of like this. Uh-huh. Yeah. And so I'm not getting input and so I feel shut off, shut down. Mm -hmm. And those feelings have me feel withdrawing, which can actually is the totally opposite of what I personally need to do to be grounded. Mm -hmm. um, particularly like when things I feel really passionate about mm -hmm. or potentially angry, but pa an extreme swing to one or the other. I used to be able to stay grounded and centered in the middle of all that, and now I'm not. And okay. I'm not sure why that is or because what I used to do to get there does not appear to be working. Okay. Tell me, tell me about quiet. that. Tell, no, darling, that's wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing all of that, Lisa. It's very helpful. Tell me about what you used to do to be grounded. Give me a little bit about what that is. Um, it's just energy work and practice, so I can't yeah. really describe it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That frustrates me, mm -hmm. and I think sometimes uh, I ran into a bunch of people who weren't kind of like me, mm -hmm. and so they wanted me to make it tangible and mm -hmm. physical, and this, and it doesn't work like that for me. And the more, and it felt like over time that I'm losing faith because I'm trying to give desire and faith mm -hmm. to have that same feeling to someone who either can't or doesn't really want to or can't identify. So, Lisa, do you know that you're an empath? Do you know this about yourself? Yes, I do. Okay, darling. <laughs> yes. Good. Well, I'm lots of things, but that's oh, no, not right? really a label that I can find that works. Okay. So, um, yes, I'm lots of things, too. We're all lots of things. I'm glad that you know. And part of the reason why you know that you're lots of things is because you're an empath and because you <laughs> know how to feel yourself. But you're an expert feeler. And this is so what I'm, what I'm getting when you first started talking about it. Um, this is something that happens um, with empaths. I'm sorry, I'm stressed out about the phone. So it's... Uh, <laughs> What's that? We had a little feedback or something? Yep. I yeah. said, I'm sorry. I'm stressed out about the phone. So my insides are hopping up and down. I'm like, look, this is not, I'm not there right now. I'm not like that about the situation. It's the phone. <laughs> okay. You got it. No worries. So, um, okay. Empaths um, tend to be very uh, sacral chakra. Are you familiar with the chakra system? You do some energy work, so I'm sure you're f familiar Kind of, I don't really need to use those, but yes, okay. I can I can grasp what you mean. Right. Well, the deal is, and it doesn't matter if you do or don't, I'll tell you what sacral energy is, or just with the energy that I'm talking about. This is what happens with empaths a lot, is because we are such expert feelers that we have like th that ungrounded feeling that um, I feel that you're even... Um, you you're being you're feeling overwhelmed there's so much and you 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 feel passionate about it but then you get you get even frustrated because you have so yeah you, you get do you get like sometimes you get so many creative ideas and you feel so much that you can't even do anything does that happen to you yes or i can't 
I can't get it from the energetic form into mm-hmm. an appropriate yes, physical live form yes. that's the same. Yeah. And so then I clinch. Mm-hmm. I and get it. Some mm-hmm. of that I, when I when I'm like doing work with other people, mm-hmm. or when I was when I was grounded enough to realize I was doing it, mm-hmm. I wasn't feeling clenched. I was nice and relaxed. And when I got to the point where I started to feel like, wait a minute, those people just I'm just constantly on duty and mm-hmm. I'm not getting paid mm-hmm. and I'm tired. Can't shut it off. But when I shut it off, I also lose my conscious contact with either my God or my guides mm-hmm. or my. Yeah. For me, it's so natural to be this way when I have to shut off or shut down. Yeah, I'm very uh, yucky. I can't, <laughs> I can't get to the energy I need mm-hmm. unless I'm really open. And if I'm open, it's way too much. I hear you. Okay. And it so didn't, are you? Do you? Yeah. Ha- uh, this is something. It's kind of a daily practice. Do you? Are you meditating every morning? Do you have a meditation practice that you're consistent with? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> um, I, I haven't. I haven't really. Oh, uh, sort no. of go to the tree place, pray at the tree, do the walking, and I had an energetic partner person yeah. that sort of did it with me. So he would like flick me on the back of the head if I was doing something wrong. Oh, honey, it's not, that's not happening anymore. And I was okay yeah. without his assistance. But at this point. Uh, I don't, I've tried to like recreate stuff. I've tried acting as if no, it yeah. just doesn't feel like it's the same. Okay, sweetie. So let me tell you, Lisa. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you some medicine though because um, I I have a strong belief that every person would that that we should be meditating in the morning or making contact is the is the deal. So and it doesn't have to take a long time. I'm telling you, it could be seven minutes, five to seven minutes. Give I've been some... I've been pull, I pulled out some card. I have cards, so I've been good. pulling out cards like uh-huh. at five in the morning oh, with the good. light off and pulling three cards of what do I need to know today Beautiful. and looking at those and going oh. Great, but but and my brain is going mm-hmm. but 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 I'm like oh god. <laughs> right. Well, the 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 benefit, the reason that we want to uh, make contact in the morning, meditate, and the contact I'm talking about is you know either God or the universe, you know your guides, all that kind of stuff. But it's and it's your inner being. It's both. They're one and the same. The universe, God, is within you. Your your inner being is God essence, is universal energies. It is the infinity mm. part of yourself. So if you are connected with the eternal even if it's for a moment, the eternal part of yourself, then in that eternal space, you're not frustrated, right? Because we have eternity to, to, get, some, to get some of these creative yes, it ideas. Gives me, it see? gives me an aim mm-hmm. so that I can continually Clarity. through the day go out, come back, go out, come back, yeah. and I'm just not getting to the come back stage, it which you keeps me yeah, because in you... normal mundane stuff and focus on problems and focus mm-hmm. on stress and being clenched mm-hmm. rather than being able to disconnect yeah. not in an unhealthy way but i understand you not- be in a space of clarity so um yeah. what i what i think is for me um what changed my way of operating and what changed my life is to have that morning meditation and you won't, the the idea is to make that contact before you make contact with anything else or like to start a conversation with yourself or with god before you start a conversation with anything else. So, I mean, before you turn on the TV, the radio, look at the phone and the emails or <laughs> anything like that, you're laughing. Yeah. Cause you do that because you know what yeah. else there's, I've talked about on this show before. There's also a neuroscientific reason for that, that, um, I've learned from Dr. Joe Dispenza. Dr. Joe Dispenza talks about how our brain, um, is a matrix of neural pathways that are formed by emotions or thoughts, which actually fire off an emotion. An emotion is actually a chemical and that forms neural pathways in our brain, just like water cutting through soil, like a river, you know? And so, yeah. And he says that. That makes sense. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. 90% or 95, I can't remember the statistic. Joe Dispenza says, uh, 90% of the thoughts that we thought yesterday, the average person thinks 90% of the same thoughts yesterday, today as they did yesterday. So that's why nothing changes. But if we can, uh, uh-huh, if we make up in the morning and we raise our vibration is one way to say it. You're an energy um, person, so you get it. Raise your vibration, which means get, making contact with love or the infinite, eternal. You also, you start, you know, from a higher vibrational place before you start those other conversations. You have the opportunity to think new thoughts because you have clear thoughts right now. You have a space of clarity, you have a whole brand new palette to start from when you just have that moment of contact. And we give ourselves plenty of time, like seven minutes, when all you need in that is one second of contact. And that's the mustard seed of faith that Jesus talks about. That's all you need. You just need a tiny bit 
You just need one. You, we're talking about frequency, and this is a part of my talk. And thank you so much for bringing all of this in. You're so great, Lisa. So wonderful to be uh, calling in right now. So when we're talking about frequency, all the, the, the strongest frequency is the one that always manifests the, the, the reality. And so you can think about it. I can feel you even tensing up. You're like, yes. Damn it, that's the problem. I'm activating, you yes. know what I mean? Like, yeah, I can feel you. My chest tightened up. I felt you. I'm oh, sorry, yeah, it is. I can't breathe. That's I'm okay. Pacing. No, it's all right, sweetie. Going, oh, it's not no, good. don't make this lady sick. Please don't. Don't want. Because no, 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 when that's I'm not your working or when I'm stressed uh-huh. and I come around people who are slightly like me, yeah. I can make them really sick by accident. Uh, oh, so no. that's the other thing. I have to be careful. I can't be all me because I might hurt someone. No, sweetie, that's not true. Or I might cause someone true. to stress. I, I'm going to just tell you that's untrue because it's my responsibility to get sick from you or not. That's my responsibility. I'm feeling it for a moment because I'm using my empathic abilities and I'm t- I'm tapped into you and I'm feeling it for a moment and then I'm just sending it right back. And I don't mean like I'm giving it back to you in an extra measure. I'm just sending it out of my space. I use that. That, that This is how we become, we, we take this sensitivity of being empathic and we take it from being a victim of it and we make it a superpower. So I felt it and that's okay. I felt it and, I, and now I don't feel it anymore. I just felt it and I, I sent it right back. It's You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, so don't worry I about it. That's forgot. my responsibility. So I got buried, buried under a bunch of stuff, and then mm-hmm. I'm grateful because I said, well, gee, God, you know, I really want to do this, so now I'm dreamwalking. So mm-hmm. as I'm dreamwalking, I'm not taking care of my own stuff. Yeah. I'm off still collecting mm-hmm. grooves. So mm-hmm. when I wake up in the morning, I, I'm not only doing the human thing of waking up and you have the stuff that's spinning through your head that always spins through your head the first thing in the morning. I also have wherever I was... My parts are dispersed, they're not here, and then I'm supposed to focus. So I the only you. thing I could think of was pull the cards before I even, like, open my eyeballs so that I could actually get an accurate... And that might, and if that's not working for you right now, the, the, the pulling the cards, um, it, so cards and different things that we do, they're all just tools. And sometimes when we overfocus yeah. on the tool, the tool stops working. Because we're over-focusing on the tool. We need to put that tool down. And you can come back to it another time, pro- probably, possibly. But I, that's what I that's feel like. That's another frustration. The... the tools that I use to do my practice, mm-hmm. of, if I call it a practice, yeah. they just seem to be rote stuff and That's now, okay. So, of... so because the, the focus is a little over, it, we have too much focus on the tool and that it's some kind of uh, wand or magic wand, which, by the way, I think magic wands are great. But you know what I mean? Like, it, it isn't the magic. You are the magic. And that's why the tool stops working. Because you're believing that the tool is magic when the tool is just a tool for you to access your own magic. And so you have to put that tool down so you can get back to your own magic and realize that you are magic. How do I block that out for people who are used to looking for a tool, like someone who would read a self-help book or that the answer is this, the answer is always outside of you. You mean people that you're helping? The people that you're helping? Yeah, how do I? Yes. So how do I not adopt their need for proof. Yeah. Well, okay. Because I have, and so it's caused me to become blech, too. <laughs> well, um, first of all, it's about, this is about you ne- needing to prove to yourself something outside of yourself. So this all goes back to... It is, thank you. <laughs> yeah. So this all goes back to you. Because you know what? I have a lot of clients that think that it's um, it's lame to use cards in a reading. You know what I mean? Like, so it's all about, and I, I realized that yeah. I kind of have a, I, I was reminded recently, I was like, hey, you can use cards sometimes in a, in a reading. Or, and I was like, oh, yeah, I can't. Like, by my guides, I was reminded that. I was like, oh, yeah. So the reason that I uh, was attracting some clients that think it's lame to use cards in a reading is because that's what I was believing. So, you know what I mean? Like, that's what I, I was activating that vibration. So it's all going back to you. And I'm, I'm going to tell you, the, as an empath, as a healer, which you are, we have, <clears throat> we have this, um, urge or desire, the purpose is service to others. But what you need to know about service to others is that com- contained inside of service to others is the principle of service to self. Service to self first. We must fill our own well before we can help to quench the thirst of others. That so w- yes, that, Well, you keep saying that. I keep reading it. You keep typing back to me on Twitter. Mm-hmm. I mean, great. Oh, are, are <laughs> oh, we yeah, connecting on Twitter? I'm well, sorry. The empty well. We're, we're connected I go to Twitter. empty wells and try to get a drink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, okay, I want to tell you about my meditation. I'm trying to get back to here, but that's what we're two empaths talking. So we're like, we're like scatting. We're going all over the place. But 
<laughs> I don't know if anybody else, other empaths are following this conversation perfectly. So um, I have a meditation that I do in the morning that includes filling that where I, I actually ground and root. You do the grounding and rooting thing. And then I bring light in down through my, my um, energy body and kind of just touches on all of my, my chakra system where you can just see it bathing you in light. And then I see a bubble fill up around me. And the bubble... I've talked about on the show before, and I fill it full of light. And the bubble is my personal spiritual boundaries. And the deal about boundaries, they're not resistant. They're not about keeping things out. They're about keeping you in. And so if I have a bubble that is around me, then I recognize that this is my energetic space, and I need to keep it full of life force energy before I can give life force energy. And you don't have to give any of life force. Life force energy is everywhere. So we're constantly receiving and staying full so that we can be a, a channel or a conductor, be someone who um, is the um, the way that life force energy helps other people. But we have to keep our bubble full. That's the well that we need to keep full. And what I like about it being a bubble is the bubbles are permeable. So I'm not going to suffocate inside my bubble. Bubbles are fragile. So it's really just my intention. But it's as strong as I want it to be. I have the complete I have complete control of it to stay intact, to not have any holes in it. To And, and when like I felt your tightness, tightness of, of the chest because I told you that what was it that I told you that made the test ch- chest tighten that? Um, oh, I know that the, the higher frequency always wins out. And I'm going to get that, get to that for you. The higher frequency always wins out. When I felt that it came into my bubble and I saw it and felt it and I sent it right back out and it goes right back out because I'm continuing to receive the life force energy. So this is all in your clairvoyance visual space in the morning. And, yeah, and, when, I, and, when, I'm, and when I'm grounded, I'm able to immediately identify mine, mm-hmm. not mine, by, not mine, wash that off, not mine, whatever I have to do to go, this is my space, or, oh, look, I let it in my space. I don't really want it in there. Why did I do that? Yeah. But it's that split second thing, and I, it's, but I'm not able. And my other thing about you talking about the bubble, mm-hmm. I part of my practice, and I don't know why, to reach up above chakra levels someone said no those are levels you just can't see them yes you can see ours no i can't yes you can we used to argue about it all the time and then he would laugh but anyway i have to put my hands way together above my head my shoulder is injured i cannot do that why do, why do you have to do that so i cannot what do you mean you have to put so it i cannot it? yeah i put my hands i do hand motions so i put my hands way up above my head like two or three levels above the chakra that's right above your head i don't know what it's called um, star, it star, sounds star. great to me when he's described it. Yeah, so soul, soul, I grab soul, that. I make a bubble in my hands then, and mm-hmm. I pull that down. Sometimes it's different colors. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's an arc. Sometimes it's part of my dome. You say bubble, I say dome. Sure. I have not been able to do that. So I've also believed that I cannot do it unless I'm able to do that. Okay. Well, then again, I'm I feel like sure this, this feels like a tool that is being over-focused upon, right? You're like, I can't, I, that tool, I can't do it for whatever, ABC reason, physical, whatever. Um, I feel like Yeah, again, but I've not ever been able to overcome it. So I don't know if that's dumb think, in my head and it's not true, or, oh no, I need another way to do it because just, that one is no longer working. I think, go for now, you can make it easy on yourself. And wouldn't it be easy on yourself if you just found another tool that worked? And if that one stops working, find another tool that works and then go back to the first ones. You know what I mean? Like, that's all okay. Do we have more yeah. callers? Okay. okay. So you your know, bubble idea kind of works a little different. It's a different perspective. I, I have, haven't used or exhausted. I have a meditation on my YouTube channel that you can, and I do this both that, that if you want to go and listen to it, whether you meditate with it or if you um, just listen to it to get the idea of it. Um, but go to my YouTube okay. channel, look up uh, Trisha Carr, um, Charmed Life with Trisha Carr. You'll find the, or you actually it's on my website too. If you go to my website, the okay. audio section, you'll see, you'll find it on there and it's on, on YouTube as, but it's just, you know, there's no video really with it. Um, I, I have more callers. Lisa, you've been so wonderful. Yep. So I want to try to get Thanks. to a few more people. Thanks. Thank you very much for your time. You're welcome. I'm going to address that higher frequency wins in the red. So please do listen to the rest of it, okay? All right, thanks. All right, thank you for calling. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. All right, we have another caller. Let's see, who's this? You're on the air. Hello, you're on the air. Oh, I I didn't realize it was me that's on the air. I'm so sorry. (laughs) That's okay. What's your name? My name is Shay Cox. I'm out of Homa, Louisiana. Oh, nice. I'm from Texas, and I actually lived in Sealy for about a year, which I think is about 60 miles uh, from the border. So, uh, Shay, is, Shay, or is that your first name? Yes. Hi, Shay. What's going on? Yes. How are you? Thanks for calling. 
I'm doing great. Thank you so much. I love your content and I love keeping up with you on Facebook. So thank you so much for everything that you're putting out there. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you so much. That makes me feel so lovely and I appreciate you. I appreciate you so much. Tell me what's going on with you today, Shay. I really appreciate those comments. I was just wondering if you could do a live reading for me and tell me what it is that I need to know right now. I just started um, really getting into my spiritual journey Mm -hmm. and my awakening, Mm -hmm. and I feel like I'm on the right path. I'm just wondering what's holding me back with Mm -hmm. my abilities. So I just wanted to see what you would have to say. You got it. Um, Yeah, right before you started, I could feel that you had a question about uh, what your abilities are even. Like you want to know, like you've you've identified one or two of them, but you're kind of like one is one one is kind of working. The other one I've I've experienced a little bit, but it's not really I'm not really connecting with it or feel uh, like I can um, rely upon it. And then you're like you kind of have this desire, you have this suspicion that you have greater abilities. And I have no idea how to connect with those. Right. Is all of that resonating with you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so let me, I just see right now, it, I just see a staircase and I, I have three of your guides who step forward. There's a female guide and she's like, sweetie, be where you are. It's fine. You be where you are because that's, you're on this step right now. What we we're talking about at the beginning of the, of the show, I was talking about if you can't manifest that car because you're activating, um, scarcity when, because you notice the lack. So you, th- that just goes to being present, dialing it back a little bit. And so that ability that, that is the primary one that you are like, yes, absolutely. Um, stay there for a bit and really dig deep into that. That is the that is the way. And from there, I'm seeing like um, I I, I kind of doodle when I'm when I'm reading sometimes. So with that that you th- see that as there's already roots there and there's a seed and so it's going to sprout and you're going to see all of these. That's from there that when you when you go into the to the the ability that you are really comfortable with or at least somewhat comfortable with and dig deeper into that. It's all the same. That's how it's going to sprout all of the, all of the other gifts. And you're right about that. I see, um, I see energy healing. Um, and so the gift that's right in front of you, um, I see it as, as a kind of counseling because you have the, you're very, you know, you have the sensitivity where you can, you have the clairsentience, you're using clairsentience where you feel other people and then you're able to use unconditional love and you compare what the other people are feeling and you, you compare that to unconditional love basically and then you can just offer them by counseling and also by your by just giving them love and you can give them adjustments does that make sense is that something you're already experiencing yes yes exactly so and um, what this is what this kind of thing that you're doing is an attunement so you're attuning them sure with your words and with with that, that the, you know, the counseling kind of thing, but you're also just attuning them by bringing in, because you know, I know where love is, and you just bring it in, and you just, um, you activate, and you embody the presence of, of a higher vibration of love, and by sitting there in that presence, you can just, I just see you even just like smiling at someone while they're talking, and they're feeling better, and that is it. That is magic. So, but you, it seems like it's subtle, but it's magic. Does that make sense? Yeah, yes. very much. Okay, good. So you are, you that even though it's a subtle thing, you're like, I just, that person feels better just because we're chatting a little bit. It's no big deal. No, it's a huge big deal. Just being out in the world with your higher vibration, with, the, with that ability to just channel love and be love, that is huge. And so um, go deeper into that and see it as, as extremely magical. See it as, wow, I'm just channeling God energy and I'm being God energy. And as you do, it, it is pushing away the, the doubt and the reaching and the non-presence. Um, I want to give you an affirmation, which is kind of just the name of God. I am that I am. So in I am that I am, you are obviously accepting everything that you are, everything that you've created and celebrating it. But it also is speaking to presence because I am is now. It And now is where... God is now is where the universe is where those higher principles where the higher laws are because the now is 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 expanded forever now it's the the eternal now and so it's above space and time it's in the quantum field and it's no longer in that lower field where we are doubting and wondering and reaching and being non-present and I should be and I should and I should right yeah. <laughs> oh, is it, is it, do you want something a little more solid? You sounded like, yeah, like you're disappointed in yourself. Oh, no, 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 okay, no, no. Okay, good. Like, we, 
<laughs> if you would look at my face right now, I'm a little like in awe. Oh, okay, good. I read that wrong. <laughs> but um, listen to no, it I love that I am that I am. I love mm, that. That's good. incredible. Thank you so much yeah, for and, um, and all re- of your juicy goodness. Oh, you're <laughs> welcome. And just when you when you. I, I repeat, I am that I am, and I am looking at it, the two things in that, which is accepting myself and celebrating myself and the creation that I am, and also accepting the now, and it's all perfect now, and, you know, being extremely present. So, um, what? and to, to get to your question, I, I hope that I got, I answered it, but in case I want to hit it head on, is what is um, blocking me, it is it is just that mm-hmm. non-presence. So just get deeper into the to where you are, where it's easy for you to accept, where um, where it's easy for you to to be in that allowance, to be in that expectation. It's easy for you with the certain abilities that you're recognizing, and so keep going into those, and then that's where the wellspring is. And then from there, that's when it's going to. Because I feel like this is new, but you you're like, oh my gosh, is this going to be like a job for me? Am I going to like make a career out of this? Yeah, if you want to, but also if you don't want to, it's fine. But I feel like you want to, right? But it feels like it's far away. Yeah, yeah, it feels like it's a little far away, and maybe you're starting to get some hints of it being uh, materializing. Yeah, absolutely. This is this is. Because you are a healer, because this is what you do, so of course it's going to be a career if that's what you desire, if it's, it feels good to you. You could have a whole different job and also love doing that on the side. And some people are healers in their bank job because they love doing the bank job and customer service. And so they, you know, you can, but you, I'm feeling you align very much with um, being that entire presence and representing it and on and being an example. And so thank you for that. Oh, we are almost out of yeah. time. Anything else, Shay? Uh, did I did I get kind of your question? I really, if you don't mind, you yeah. did. You totally hit it okay. for me. Thank you so much. Yeah. I've just always asked for my guides to tell me who they are, and mm-hmm. I'm sure it doesn't mean a darn thing in the spirit world who they are as long as they're here with me. Mm-hmm. I just would love to know who they are. Well, I see. Like I said, I saw three step forward, um, and I am getting because sometimes. Um, uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful process, at least it was for me, to uh, meet them and get their names and all that kind of stuff. So I feel like that's something that is for you, for you to have that experience. I don't want to like ask, I mean, they're not going to give me a name right now, but I do see a female who, st- and okay. she is a primary, and then I see um, a younger version of a of someone who is like representing the ages of 30 or something. That's the kind of representation I'm seeing. And then I'm seeing an older wise, wise sage type of male um and um but the deal here is that that it's your journey and that you just ask and you believe whatever it is you're given that's it and then you go with that it's very much like that what we're talking about with your gifts so you go in and you feel and you say who's there and you may, it may take you a couple of meditations but they you who's there who's there and then the third day you get a name or a face that's it there's your answer believe it and go with it and guess what your imagination is a channel of divine so if you, when we say, am I imagining this or is it really clairvoyance? Those are very much the same thing. And that's how we relax is when we when we are able to allow our imagination because we're comfortable with our imagination. We allow our imagination free because we relax because there's no risk then. Got it? Awesome. Oh, Beautiful. Thank you so much, welcome. Trisha. You're welcome. Thank you so much for calling, Shay. And thank you again for your kind comments. Have a good oh. day. Um, do we're, we have just a couple minutes left, so yeah, okay. W- you think we have time for another caller? Okay, cool. You you keep me on track there, Jarvis. <laughs> I have another caller. Who's this? this you're on the air. Hello. Okay. Hello. Oh, there we go. Hi there. Who is this? Oh shoot, we lost. Okay. Well, I think I think we kind of don't have time anyway. I'll uh, have about two minutes. So I just wanted to, uh, I told Lisa that I would um, wrap up that thought on the higher free or the stronger frequency always wins. Well, this, don't let that freak you out. Actually, that is a good thing because all we have to do is have that mustard seed of faith, like Jesus said. So that means that if we for one second have that, where we, we connect with the higher frequency of, I, I'm going to get that car, whatever it is. It's just for a second. We don't have to be perfect. And then we go back into the other uh, thinking and feeling states for that one second where the higher frequency is that positive thought and vibration and belief and blah, blah, blah. It has to play out. It can't go anywhere. When it, it takes a moment and you are connected with the higher, when you're aligned with that higher frequency, when you're aligned with your inner being, with the God self, with the desire that's the higher thing, for one second, 
it has to play out because energy can neither be created nor destroyed. So even if you fall back into the, the other thinking, that, that moment that that stronger frequency was the positive thing that you want, it will play out and it will become because it has to because that is a universal law. And by the way, the universe loves us by having universal laws. Universal laws are a way that we are loved because just think of you, if you're a perfect parent, you want to love your child unconditionally and also give them guidance, right? That's how you love them is by giving them guidance. That's how the universe loves us. So I think that's it for the show today. Thank you so much for tuning in. I love you, whoever you are. (laughs) 